Okay, how's everybody doing today? We just got back with Kit Fox. We've been to the river. Took my new friend to me. I'm going to introduce you because he came all the way from Alaska to ride in the Kit Fox. That's not 100% true, but we'll go with that. Ready to go. Okay, this is Mike Davis, all the way from Alaska, and he came to get this beautiful trailer. It is the best I've ever seen for an enclosed trailer. It's, it is beautiful, but Mike, if you will, Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here and what you're doing. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm building a Series 7 Sportster, and uh, it's my retirement bird. I want to be able to travel with it, so I needed a mobile hanger for it. Um, and if you've looked at kit boxes, you know that one of the problems with the trailers is the width, trying to get an airplane in the trailer. So uh, this trailer is built by a rising industry industries. Uh, it's ordered through custom aircraft trailers and they uh, work with the manufacturer to do all the stuff that needs to be done for a custom airplane trailer, uh, like making it wider. They will make a trailer up to 110 inches wide, which this is not that wide with the Sportster, but if you had an STI, you'd probably have to go 110 inches wide. Um, there's a lot of little details on it that I had them customize just from experience I've had with other trailers and uh, go over some of that stuff. So the tongue's extended 18 inches out, which makes it a lot easier to turn sharp when you're this long. You gotta turn around, it can be challenging. Um, I put a landing on it to be able to make it easier to get in and out of our camper. Move the jack all the way back as far as we could. So now if you're just pulling behind the truck, you can drop your tailgate and you don't hit your jack. I love your electric jack too. That's yes, very nice. <laughs> I've never had one before. I have not either. That's why I really like that. <laughs> so the ladder takes you up to the full walk-on roof. I did that for two reasons: for snow load and because I plan to put solar panels up there. Um, and I told Mike I have never seen a trailer. I had no idea you could even get a trailer built that you could walk on the roof. So to me, that's impressive. The, the ladder is is impressive on its own. <laughs> Yeah, this trailer is 26 feet long. 26. Um, width of V, so you got a two foot V in the front, which does not count in that measurement. So a little bit of extra storage space there. I went ahead and added an awning, kind of a last minute addition, uh, just because it's nice to have a, when you got a truck camper, I've got a couple of smaller awnings on this, but this is a nice place where you can set up a table and stuff before out camping. I don't think I got your camper in here, but this is what he travels in. He's really setting up for retirement. I'm kind of envious of him. He's really got a nice, nicest setup I've seen. My wife loves to fly, but she doesn't want to fly long distances. So we compromise. We'll travel long distances in the RV and then the airplane's there whenever we get there. There you go. So it's got a standard 36 inch door on the front. Get that foot down down there. It's wired for both DC and AC power. And lots of E-Tracks in it for tying things down. Look at the tracks. Five different places where you can choose where to tie your tie anything you're hauling down. That's, that's amazing. And my last trailer I had the three on the floor and I always regretted not doing the wall too. So this mm -hmm. one we got them on the walls too. This is a huge trailer when you get inside it. Eight and a half foot ceiling. Don't know that I would have really needed it that tall, but I didn't have a measure of a kit fox with the MT prop on it on the 29 inch wheels, so I just went tall. Yeah, that should be plenty. I like his tailgate. There's no cables on the side, which a lot of the, a lot of the will have cables here, and he said they hindered they hindered your uh, mounting and rolling stuff in. This one has a winch that lets uh, your tailgate all the way down through the ramp. He's getting ready to do that right now, but that. Go ahead and drop that down. Completely unobstructed ramp. That is. I haven't figured out exactly how yet, but the plan is to put some kind of pulleys up on the roof. 
then take this and hook it to another line that goes all the way to the front and comes back to be able to pull the kit fox up into the trailer using the same winch. There you go. So he's going to make a pulley system of some kind that, that runs the rope back down here to the front. And then back down, he'll be able to come right out here and hook to the kit fox and pull it in using the same winch. So that's going to be a really nice feature. And this is 100 inches across from here. 100 here. inches. A couple inches to spare. Hopefully no hanger rash on the airplane. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem with your winch system where you control it coming yeah, in and out. Put some tracks on the floor. I think it should be just fine. He told me he was coming in backwards with the plane. The plane would be hauled yeah. backwards. So the wheels, the axles actually set just a little bit farther aft because the motor and stuff will be back here. The main gear will stop behind the axles here. So the weight will, the, you know, the main gear weight will actually be behind the axles. So they moved them back just a little bit. I don't remember how much it was. He has lights, he has AC and DC lights. Yeah, loading lights on the back here. Nice big bright ones light up the whole back end. And a little spoiler on it, because in Alaska we have trouble sometimes where water will get across on the seals around there and then freeze up. And then when you go to open your door, you rip the seals off. Okay. So that gives me an extra foot for putting solar panels on and it keeps that snow and ice and stuff from getting onto the door seals. That's interesting. I just thought he had a speed wing back here. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that's a little different on this trailer that I really like, is this is, uh, you notice when I push on this, it doesn't flex like most trailers do. Yes. This is a composite skin. It's an 80 thousandths composite. There's two layers of 20 thousandths aluminum with the composite material in between sandwiched. Wow. So it's not supposed to expand in the heat like normal ones do. You can see there's not hardly any flex in it at all. Um, you we'll can tell see. that by looking down it because normally a, 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 it would be just wavy and yeah, and it, it is solid. Very, very solid. Well, and there's some heat on there right now. There's so a lot of heat. There's here. a little bit of wave, but boy, yep. not very much. That is very impressive. It's got 6,000 pound tor torsion axles with the E rated tire. Eight which, hole wheels. Yep. Having the, the 10 ply tire was important to me because of the tires. road condition. Going yep. back and forth through Canada can really tear up your tires. He tells me the roads aren't quite as good in Canada and Alaska as they are here in the south. They're, south. They're even worse than Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these rings on the side are for tying it down in your airport parking spaces there you go i bet you guys would like me i bet you never would have guessed that so you tie the tongue down to your <laughs> tailwheel spot and these are where your wing tie downs to go and then it secures it in your spot so the wind can't so even in a windstorm yeah you're safe that is really something yeah, there's a lot of nice little touches for specifically for airplane use that is really, really nice. So Mike, you've come from Georgia, you've come eight and a half miles. How's it pull? Uh, well, empty. It pulls great. You can definitely tell it's back there. I, I don't know what the exact weight is, but it's somewhere 3,400 to 3,800 pounds, we're thinking. Um, but with the camper on, the wind, it's a little bit shorter than the camper, so it doesn't really you know, slow you down. The truck mm -hmm. doesn't have any trouble pulling at all. Uh, it's tracking behind it real well, especially for being light and not having any weight in it. It's tracking really well. Um, you know, I joked about Kentucky, but boy, there's stretch in there by Fort Campbell that's just terrible. And and uh, didn't throw you around or anything. Didn't throw me around you, yeah. or anything. It seems to pull real nice. The hitch seems real solid. Um, you know, once you get a load in it, that'll be the true test. I'll put a camera inside when the kit box is in there first time <laughs> and watch it and see how it's doing. But yeah, happy with it so far. So here's the deal. Mike's bought property two hours via Kip Fox away from me. So I, I'm as excited as he is because shortly when he retires in a couple years, a yep. couple of years, this he's going to snowbird. You know, we snowbird in Florida. When you're in Alaska, you snowboard in, snowbird in Missouri. <laughs> so he's going to be two hours over here with a new runway for me to go to in the wintertime. So. I'm looking forward to it, Mike. Lots of rivers in the middle where we can meet. Absolutely. Yep. Sandbars galore. Yep. Mike, I appreciate your time. I had a 
great time flying with you this morning. I did too. I appreciate the hospitality. We've had a good time, good visit. So, wish you the best going back to Alaska. And thank you. Look forward to seeing you in Missouri. All right. <laughs> thank you.